Hey, Mistakes Listeners, this is Dave, and we're coming back at you with episode 58. We recorded this episode on February 27th, 2016, and uh, this week we actually changed our format up a little bit. So we took some of your feedback, and uh, we're going to dedicate more time to just us talking, uh, basically reviewing, uh, instead of, say, reviewing uh, children's shows. We're still open to doing that, of course, but uh, this week we thought we'd just try to tackle an actual parenting topic so the topic this week happens to be should you search your kids rooms anyway as you know you can follow us on twitter and that is at parent mistakes and you can also like us on facebook at parenting mistakes and as always sit back and enjoy the show <laughs> okay there we go <laughs> It's going. I think it's going. We had a is little this, technical difficulty. Is this difficulty how we're going to start the podcast? Yeah, that's what we're going to start today. <laughs> so what, what audience members don't know is as we go into the show to make the recording over Skype, we have a small application called Skype Recorder because, man, we are we are on a budget on this show. <laughs> yes, we are. Free tools. Yes, the free, free tools. tools. Yeah, that's right. Free tools. It's constantly giving me all sorts of good information, like where I can buy a car from Honda, right? Anyway, uh, we usually have to have a little bit of a delay before we start talking or it just kind of records weird. Uh, and I'm sorry, but we – it, it kind of – the my system went, uh, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, we're professionals. Here. Yeah, that's right. It just, it just, it just wasn't quite there, and it, oh, and it stuck and it and unstuck. So there we go. So, um, how many times do you think you've kind of eaten crow in your house, where something significant has happened, and you overlooked it? I guess you'd have to be more specific. What? You mean, Why? You mean, you mean I've just made a mistake? Uh, no. I le- okay. Let me get. Yeah, boy, that was really general. I am. Are we so talking sorry. marital, or are we talking with children? Children or marital? Something that you know, like, wow, that's kind of a, a milestone, and you kind of went, "What is this?" You know, eh? Because you're kind of like kids are a little bit like flies. Sometimes they're kind of buzzing around your head a lot, and you're like, "Whoa, I don't want to get you another drink," or you know, I'm in I'm in stack phase right now, right? They have a very difficult time trying to acquire snack. They have okay. to basically go up to the top of the refrigerator to get Cheerios. Right. Or, right. So it's a, it's a requirement of me to actually go down there and feed my children, which I do not mind doing. The problem is, is right now all they want to do is eat. Right. So there's always something going on. Yeah, that's on. not going to end. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm yes, on but the op- yours feed themselves. I yours. understand that, but I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum in that mine just go get stuff. Right. And then I have to say, hey, how about uh, how about we not eat that right now? <laughs> well, then why is it in the house? What, do they go in there and they start making pasta or something? No, but oh. like if a kid is hungry yeah, and they say, I'm hungry, I want a snack, as good square parents, we might say, well, how about a piece of fruit? <laughs> right. How about some vegetables? <laughs> yeah, that's, okay, and I, I – how, yeah. how about not chips and sugary drinks? Right, or what's the uh, cookies and right, yeah, mm-hmm. right. So as a parent, I over time you try to guide your children so that you can give them the freedom to feed themselves, but they're going to make good choices. Why are the bad choices even in your house? Well, it's not that they're bad choices. Well, it's you're just, saying there's better choices. Well, there's better choices. Well, do you have chips in your house? Well, I'm not going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have chips in our house. I'm not saying that they're getting a pint of ice cream out of the fridge and well, just yeah. getting a spoon and just eating it in the middle of the afternoon right before dinner. Right, for dinner, yeah. But, yeah, if they were going to, say, grab some crackers or something or some chips as opposed to, say, a piece of fruit. Wait a minute. This is not a, it's not a terrible <laughs> choice. <laughs> this is this is a super tangent. We, are, we have Back to way, your original question. way Back gone off course. Question. All have I was I, trying to say oh, is that yes. my children are constantly approaching me with all sorts of stuff. I did this piece of artwork. I did this, right? And it gets to the point where you're like, you're, it's, it's such a weird parenting thing because I feel very conflicted about it. It's a creation. Yes. They've put effort into it. They have shown it to me. 
and I've seen hundreds of them. Correct. And oftentimes, like I don't want to, I don't want to squash them by giving them the impression that eh, all right, just another, you know, double of painting that might look like a sun. I'm not sure what it looks like, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I would say cherish those moments because they will not be handing you beautiful artwork forever. So, that. so this morning, my daughter, who is in kindergarten, who has been basically secretly learning how to read. She does not want to admit that she is reading because she'd rather be read to. But she is reading a lot. And she's also been writing. But it's been a lot of just kind of approaching it with a bunch of letters and gibberish on on a piece of paper, right? All right. Okay. This morning, she came up to Dad, and I got literally a thing that, in my opinion, just looked like gibberish again. Like, oh, you know, oh, that's really that's really cool, whatever, you know. And I'm gonna go on and move on. And she moved on, but she showed it to her mom, and mom looked at it and went, what What are you trying to say here? Now, when I read it, I read, wow, mom, bo, you, oh, to be you, full, squarey to mom. That's Okay. That was the sentence I got, right? That's a Star Wars language of some sort. <laughs> well, that's what the sentence, and... Kayleen is working on getting her letters lined up. This sentence, as she repeated it, and it's incredibly accurate, and I don't know where she got what she got, was, and this is how she said it, you, mom, do you want to Bellevue Square with mom? So in other words, she wrote a sentence basically, I want to go to Bellevue Square with mom. She's this was her first sentence, and I missed it because okay. all I could see was another just a why old mom bow you to Bellevue Square, right, to mom. So what are we learning here? What I'm saying is, is that there are just – well, I think there are parents out there that would completely understand this, and what I'm saying is even though there are 500 paintings of the same double dop with some sort of weird color and a rainbow, I think there's actually a lot more to this data than is led to believe. Okay. <laughs> does that, am I going anywhere, or is that it? Is that so just the weird So do you feel like intro? you need to go back and reconcile with your daughter and say, I'm sorry, I did not? I immediately went back to her once we interpreted what she had done and actually created her first sentence because this is at the level of maybe her first word. We were so excited. I mean, we were in kindergarten. I wasn't writing sentences. I mean, she attempted to write Bellevue Square. You can actually see Bellevue Square. I don't even know where she got that. And they're actually at Bellevue Square today. Um, but we went back and I was like super excited and so proud of her. But it was one of those things that I don't know. Like I said, Maybe I should start going downstairs and evaluating more. I don't know. Um, but it is a weird – I guess here it is in a nutshell. It is a very strange thing sometimes to be a parent and that there's so much going on that sometimes these little things sneak through, big significant moments. And I, I wonder to myself how many of these moments I've actually missed and or is it really that important that – I miss them or not, right? Like, I feel very conflicted. Okay. You've missed a few. Yeah. <laughs> and you will miss a few more. <laughs> that's that's what I bring to the table today, my friend. Well, and I can tell you that having looked back, because, again, to catch people up if they've not listened to us before, Dave has younger children. I have older children. So I'm in a phase where I'm looking back now and saying, oh, I really am wondering if I missed some moments. Mm. And I think in some ways it's really difficult to sort of savor moments because you're always in kind of a mode of, I just want to get through this week. Not that it's miserable, 
but you look at your kids and you always say, for example, I was, yeah, see now you, you, that that's not good. That's not good podcasting right there. <laughs> I know, but Dave, I just, is, Dave I, is showing me I the to... video. I can see this. <laughs> I think it's backwards. Well, it makes perfect sense to me. I don't know what your problem was. <laughs> this is right. This is the Bellevue Square right there. Yeah, I thought I'd sneak that in on you. In some ways, it's sort of like the snack discussion, where part of your brain right now may say, "Boy, I'm looking forward to the day where I don't have to reach the Cheerios for them anymore." Yes, that will be nice. But I can tell you, looking back on it, you have sort of a sentimental attachment to those Cheerio moments. And pair that with my phase of life where I now have to guide because I'm not going to sit in the kitchen monitoring the pantry all the time. Right. You can monitor the pantry without having to monitor it because they can't reach. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think there was somebody saying, I think I bring this to the table because there are significant things that happen. And yes, we do miss them. But it's really – I guess it's really cool when you do catch them and or – I mean this phase of life is just going to go by real quick because, hey, you've got a daughter going to college and she's not worrying about going to Bellevue Square anymore. Um, Although she is at the mall right now, but that's a different story for a different day. And I also think that on, on this show in particular, as we acknowledge you know, our time as parents, um, I think people kind of like equate – our experiences with their experience as well. Like, I've totally been there. And I think what I'm saying is that there's always this conflicted nature of how significant is this and how insignificant is it not, right? Well, and you may not really be able to judge that in the moment. It is tough. Yeah, that's my conflict. It is tough to know when I need to vault a situation or just say, yes, it's the 500 piece of art or, gosh, she counted to 66 or, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or it's just, you know, here's the other deal. In this day and age with the Facebook society that we have right now, if it's not a recorded moment, then it's not a moment that happened, right? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, parents 100 years ago would not have the same problems we're having right now. You know. No, but you can't get caught up in the sort of recorded mentality because otherwise then you're just following your kids around with a video camera all the time waiting for them to do something significant. Yes. And that's not the solution either. And that is not the solution. But it is a part of our culture right now. Sure. So, like I said, it's weird being a parent today. So speaking of phases of life. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So a little bit of a announcement slash caveat for our listeners. We are going through a little bit of a, what are we going to say, philosophical shift? Yeah, well... We're going we're gonna to try something a little different. I'll make, it, I'll make it really simple for our listening audience. We have gotten a lot of feedback, and some of the feedback that we've gotten is, hey, I think we'd like a little bit more Todd and Dave, kind of kind of what they do, their, their thing on their show, and possibly a little bit less of the reviews. Yes. So we are going to give people what they want. And That's try right. it out. That's right. Give people what they want. So we're going to talk a little bit more about just parenting in general, some topics that come up, that have come up in our lives, and we will also be discussing some topics that people give to us. So today, speaking of phase of life, we're going to talk about your kids' rooms. Do your daughters share a room? They do not. They have separate rooms. Okay. And I'm assuming that will continue unless you put them together and you want to create a second social space for yourself. I have a social space for myself? Oh, a second okay. social space. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just say mom and dad want to have a gym, so you're going to yeah. share. It. <laughs> well, boy, that would be nice. Um, okay, so they have separate rooms. They do. My, my kids, uh, my son has his own room, and then my daughters share. So we were going to discuss the topic of searching kids rooms now just so that's sort of, that's our topic today that's our topic so today the now, thing is now, when you look at when you come to our podcast you actually see that in the title right it's not a show like a tv show it is is searching a room how are we going to say this should you search your kids rooms there you go thank you now we should say as a caveat 
or as a clarifier, searching a room has a certain law enforcement flavor to it, does it not? As in, you're going to be outside the door, and all sure. of a sudden, you're going to you're doing like signals in the hallway to your <laughs> spouse, and all of a sudden, you just <laughs> pound the door in and you run in and. Right now, actually, I don't. I understand what you're saying. That's more like swatting. Yes. This this is more like uh, the private investigator type thing. Yes. No one sees me. I'm the ninja. Kids are away at school or whatever. Correct. When I when I hear searching, that's that's the picture that comes up in my brain. And also, again, there's a spectrum between searching and say inspecting. So as your kids get older. And you give them, say, more chores, which we do in our house. And if one of your chores is, go clean your room. And then they come and they say, okay, I'm done cleaning my room. And you say, well, I'm going to inspect your room to make sure you haven't just shoved everything underneath the bed or into the closet or into the corner. <laughs> right. I want you to actually clean. That's yeah, so let, let's put a foundation on this discussion because we kind of had some in the pre-show, which was at my phase of life, my daughters at this point are close to being just open books, 80 to 90 percent. Even some of the stuff they get involved in that's wrong, they just straight up tell us, I did something wrong, right? There's not a whole lot of concealment for them. There is a little bit of here, but even when they try to conceal something they're very obvious about it or they're whispering about it so in our household we are actually working on privacy we are actually working on hey when you're changing your clothes you should shut the door when you are going to the bathroom you need to shut the door we're trying to basically uh, again just simply work on privacy uh, and and self-awareness and you know, these are things that we're trying to establish, right? Right. So that's the foundation thing. I think that we've all kind of set up as parents is that – and I think what I say to Kayleen is this room is your responsibility. You are the master of this domain. This is where you exist. And I've actually kind of practiced with her a little bit too. Like if I shut the door or I give her a timeout or something, I will actually knock on the door before I go in to give her the opportunity to practice to say this is how we work in our house with privacy. And I just don't barge in on your and you and I just don't barge in on your room and rummage through your stuff because I don't want you doing that to me. Okay. So that is kind of the foundation of this. But as time has gone on, and this is where I think that the your your perspective gets very fascinating because you are the one who's actually established you, Todd Pfeiffer, the the parent in this house, is the one who's probably established privacy policies in yes. your house. Yes. Well, and again, it, it changes. We talked a little bit about this before, that once your kids start getting out, whether it's school or with friends, they will have the potential for bringing things home, and no longer do you have sort of total control about what's in that room and what they're doing. So... Let me ask you this, and I think we'll do this a few times, is we will sort of project into the future. Right. So here I am, the guinea pig. <laughs> here you are, the guinea pig. <laughs> right. Because so, I haven't been there. So as an abstract idea, when you say, hey, I'm not going to go into your room, I'm not going to rummage through your stuff. But do you also sort of project a message to your daughters that, hey, I'm still the parent and I could do that at any point? Or do you sort of say, I'm not going to come, I'm still not going to come in here ever unless you give me a reason to. And I guess sort of dovetailed with that is, what have you told them in terms of what is the reasons for? So let me go through my list, right? When, uh, when somebody is basically saying, hey, you can't come into my room because it's my room. Right. Right. Uh, in my brain, I think, well, I own the house, hence I own the room. Everything in that room is mine, but now I'm conflicted because I've just spent, I don't know, 10 years telling this girl it's actually her room and that she has domain over her room and that she, I just, no one can just come in there and just rummage around, say without permission. Correct. So the question is, is <laughs> and this is, this is the issue and I come to you because I'm like, I don't know who owns that room. 
Who has ownership of that domain? I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, they don't. I mean, what are you teaching them if you're just going in there and just willy-nilly looking through their stuff? Well, okay, so when I say it's my room... You're saying this is dad's room. Let's just this, be, is, da- this is dad's clarify. house. Yeah. It's sort of the general scope of as long as you live under my roof, we have certain rules. Now, do I just barge into my, you know, kids' rooms? No. I do the exact same thing you do, particularly with the girls, that if the door is closed, I will knock. And if they say, hold on a second, then I wait. That's just what you do. I think the other thing that I do is, but I have communicated to them, and I don't want to get off uh, tangent here, but we've communicated this in general in terms of ownership. So, say, rooms, cell phones email addresses, that sort of thing. Like when our kids got cell phones, when two of my kids have cell phones, we told them, this phone is a privilege. We expect you to treat it well, but we reserve the right to at any point check your calls, check your texts, check your activity. And I think we've talked about texting in the past, but we should do a show on texting. We should, and we will. We sort of approach the room the same way. Now, again, there's there's courtesy that we have also taught them in terms of knocking and that sort of thing. We don't go in on a random basis and just start going through drawers like we're the mafia looking for something that's been hidden. Well, when I worked in jail, that's how it functioned. Right. When I worked with the King County Jail, this is how it would go. They didn't know when it was going to occur, and then suddenly there was search and seizure. And it was very unfair, but of course they're in a situation that is – intended to be unfair for your child on the other hand i feel like you're just undermining them at that point well you don't know at some point this week we're going to come into your room and dump your clothes right and and let me give you a couple additional things that we have encouraged well encouraged slash slash um required media does not go into the bedroom so my daughter is 18 so you know she may be in her room texting or something like that but like she rarely brings she does not bring her computer in there or her her tablet. Same with my son. They don't go in the bedrooms. They stay in the public spaces. We also have, since our kids have been young, we've sort of encouraged an open door policy to sort of say, if you're going to hang out in your room, why don't you just keep the door open? Hmm. Which I think creates a more open space to sort of say, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to hide. Why don't you just leave the door open? Now, of course, there are caveats to that. So, for example, my son is a drummer, and he has a drum set in his room. So we will require him to close the door sometimes when he's banging away on the drums. Otherwise, it's just echoing throughout the entire house. So I that's don't... one of the... So let's just try to I'm trying to I'm trying to go back to our original question. Yes. Which is should you search your child's room? And I I don't know if we're getting to an answer. I think I I would say again back to what we tell our kids. I think you should infuse into your kids from an early age that while they have a level of responsibility and ownership of their room, ultimately you reserve the right to search if need be. Because once you get down the road of, say, high school, where, yeah, we have to face the reality that our kids can bring stuff home. And I've talked to parents that have kids that, you know, they've got pornography in their room they've got you know alcohol they've got drugs and stuff like that and parents have had to go in looking for that i think the other the other challenge is is sort of like behavioral i mean it's not necessarily that the kids are doing something sinister but you've got and and again we could go gender thing here but my girls they live together in a room and their room is pretty orderly hmm it's pretty organized, whereas my son is a straight-up slob, 
And a lot of parents, parent, especially if parents, if they have boys, and again, girls can be slobs too, but I know there are parents that would chuckle at this right now, that their boys just, I don't know what it is. You were pretty organized when you were a kid, were you not? Um, it depended. I What would happen for me was that the room would get really junky, and then I couldn't take it anymore, and I would just clean it. Okay. Uh, nothing like your room. Your room was always immaculate. It was. Well, and this is always an interesting challenge for parents because what happens when our kids are just not like us? Because what do you always say about parenting? You tell your kids things, but then you have to model it, right? It's sort of the do as I say, don't do as I do, but it's you you tell them I want mm-hmm. you to do this, and then you actually do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, my son, you know, again, I'll tell you one, a couple of quick little stories. My son, when he has cleaned his room, on occasion, what he has done is, and this was, he doesn't do this as much anymore. When he was a little younger, he would have, say, a lunch pail from school, and it would have a half-eaten lunch in it, and he would clean his room, yep. and he would shove the lunch pail into the closet. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so, so then you get into this weird area as a parent to sort of say, all right, am I searching my kid's room, not looking for drugs, but looking for old lunch old lunch, yeah, and cans and stuff like that? Which is uh, currently an issue that we have right now, but of course, um, you know, it gets <laughs> – this is not a very simple topic to just kind of – tackle in itself because when you're talking about open door policy of course you have two girls that share a room because right. Jonathan just allowed to go in their room whenever he wants no because Maddie and Kayleen go in each other's rooms all the time right and I can't imagine their toys are so exchanged in there there's such a hodgepodge of sharing involved um, that it would be really difficult it actually really gets difficult when Kayleen says I want to shut my door and Maddie's like well I've got 50% of my toys in there <clears throat> you know, so <laughs> but what we should we should try to focus really on the question is should as parents we search should we search our children's room? I think what I'm hearing from you is what the policy you've set up in our house is hey kids, we want you to understand privacy and we want to respect you and we want you to respect us, but they're ultimately those rooms are still ours. Yes. And we're going to go – I mean, how do you do it? Do you just go through them every once in a while? Like if they're not home, do you actually search the room while they're there? No, I don't, and we have not done that recently. Again, we don't do that as much as the girls. It'd be, it'd be my son more <laughs> yeah, often just because, Jonathan. again, I'm not <laughs> – again, I'm not looking for bad stuff. I would be going in there looking for, say, recyclables. Yeah. Because, you know, or, you know, he'll get a Slurpee from 7-Eleven. He'll come home and he'll just put the cup on the shelf and that sort of thing. So some of that, again, is is fighting the battles that you want to fight. So I think to sum up, as you said, parents have to remember they're still the parents. And as much as we want to build trust, you know, I, I will say genuinely I trust my kids. I do. They're not flawless, they make mistakes, but in general, they have earned that trust. And so as a parent, thankfully, I don't really feel like I have to go into their room every time they leave to see if there's anything bad going on. But, you know, I'm in my kids' rooms in and out, just, you know, you're bringing out laundry, you're putting stuff on their desk, you know, you're looking for things that they're looking for, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think what I hear you saying is that it's a... So there's a family policy involved that everybody's well aware of, but you as a parent need to be in a heart condition that is saying, I trust my children and I'm hoping for the best, but I need to go in there because this is also my domain and I need to be responsible for it. Right. And I have to be realistic. And as your kids get older, as they hang out with certain people, you just have to say, hey, they could bring stuff home. They could right. do certain things. But I think, yes, I agree. But I think also, I think 
what I like what is being said is that I, as I come into this this world, um, I don't want to go with the expectation of every time I'm in there, I'm looking for pot. Correct. Right? Oh, my gosh. You know, my kids could be totally good kids, but no, my expectation is there's probably some sort of, you know, pot plant <laughs> being grown in their room, and I haven't been there in six months, so. Right, but all of, also it's some of it is just the guiding of them as still people. So if I go into Jonathan's room and I look see a bunch of stuff and I say, "Hey, do you do you want? Should we put an extra shelf on your wall so you can put these things up up on the wall instead of you just sort of hmm. putting them all in the corner?" Yep, fair enough. That sort of thing. So, so we don't have to answer the question, but I think it gives it. I think we've given it some some clarity. Yes, we don't have so, to answer the question. I don't think so we have, can answer so the question. Have, so, so have fun in the future. Because right. I'm having fun now. How about that? <laughs> no, but it's really a good discussion to have. I mean, and that's why we changed the format of our show. That's right. Is to start parenting discussions that uh, don't actually have solutions. Actually, we've never been a solution show. No. And there isn't an there isn't a one stop shop for parenting. There isn't an exact way to do things. No, but I do like I do like the attitude that you're saying. Like this is the attitude the parents should have for the situation. Versus, hey. They're guilty before tried. So, even though we are changing our format, what hasn't changed is our social media. So you can follow us on Twitter, Parent Mistakes. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, Parenting Mistakes. You can send us an email, because we love to read email, parentingmistakes at hotmail.com. And if you got a few bucks that you want to give to a worthy organization you can go on patreon you can support us on patreon you can support that's us all on you patreon. need to say it just sound like pps right <laughs> thank you for your support <laughs> but we they never say this. they never say hey you want to give us a few bucks <laughs> well they sort of do but they say in a very polite pbs sort of way well, what they say is and if you would like to support this ongoing awesome endeavor you, you can go. support us on patreon there you go Hey, can you give me a few bucks, Todd? What do you do when I tell you that? No. Just try to be casual. Yeah, I just walk up to the guy on the street. Give me a few bucks. No, if I were if I were the guy on the corner with a cardboard box, I'd be like, on my cardboard box, they support me on Patreon at www. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? That's what some people do sometimes. They're just straight to the point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Until next time, and uh, we should probably sign off and go check to make sure our kids' rooms are clean. <laughs>